our first speaker tonight, hosts trivia, plays trivia, and creates trivia content. Let's hear it for Kat Johnson. All right, so the city you're looking at, that's Kowloon Walled City. That's 6.4 acres of space, 14 stories tall. It was home to 50,000 people, which means at one point it was the most densely populated place on earth. In opposition to that, very little of it remains, both physically and in record, and there's reasons for that. So it's right next to Hong Kong, but you'll notice it is not Hong Kong. And that's a problem because Hong Kong is leased to Britain from China for 99 years, but Kowloon was not. But Kowloon was still right there, and Britain was like, we don't want soldiers in that fort, and China was like, we don't really know what to do. So for a long time, it was just this empty fort. Um, it kind of was useful in World War II, like a little bit, not a lot, it was just there. But it became a very convenient place to sell drugs from. Because if you're right next to Hong Kong, but you're not in Hong Kong, that's great. So it became full of like gangs and crime syndicates and just a lot of crime, but it built up from there until eventually it built way up. So by the 50s, it was like initially populated by gangs. Uh, Hong Kong did not love that you could walk over there and buy drugs. So Hong Kong sent in their police force, got rid of the crime, and then it was just a city. Like it was just a community and it kept going until by 1980, it was 14 stories tall. And that's what it looked like most of the time. And it was full of families, like it was a real city. It was hardly functional, but it was a real city. It had schools, it had communities, it had everything. Um, and the logistics of living there were absurd and that's part of why it's so poorly documented. So from the outside, there were lots of stores. People would come from Hong Kong to like go to the dentist or buy fish balls or whatever. There were 66 entrances, but they were really hard to find. Which means as an outsider, if you wanted to document this, it took work to find your way into the city. But once you were in, you were in. Like if you walk in, you can go back and forth, you can go up and down, and for the most part, you can traverse all of it. Here's an artist's rendition of what it might look like from the inside if it were all well lit and clean. Um, <laughs> which for the most part, it was not. So you can see just how densely populated these apartments were full of people, and how difficult it must have been just to figure out how to live there. This is one of the only maps that exist of a floor plan, and it's not complete, and it's not very good. An engineering student made it by like wandering around and drawing where he went. But it wasn't a friendly place just to walk in and be like, I'm going to make a map. And also, it was dark. Like, it was so dark. And that's the thing that you don't think about looking at it from the outside. This is a typical alley. Uh, people carried around umbrellas to not be dripped on. <laughs> there were just open storefronts. There were puddles. There was no place to put trash. So the trash was just right there. Um, that also contributes just to the lack of documentation. Like, there was no planning involved. It was a modular city. Electricity, not documented, stolen from Hong Kong. They connected the wires, they stole off the grid. There were exposed wires everywhere, but there was never like a major fire, which is insane, but also great. So nobody paid utilities, uh, which meant that nobody paid for water either. And like, there were lots of like places of business there and you could work there and get paid under the table. There was no regulation. So water carrier was a popular job because there were only four wells. So you'd pay somebody to bring your water to your apartment, wherever that might be. There was plumbing. We don't know anything about it. We don't have that documented. We just know that there was plumbing a little bit. This is the roof, one of the only pieces of video footage from it because it's dark, you can't take video, the technology wasn't there. The roof was important because you could be outside in the light, but also you could put trash there and it wouldn't clog up the alley. Uh, but, the, but the cool thing about the roof is that it was capped at 14, because, at 14 stories because it was right next to the Kai Tak Airport, which at the time was insanely busy. So you could stand on top, they had to cap it so the planes wouldn't hit it. And also consider the noise, right? The noise of living next to this major airport and also the water drips and also all of the 49,999 people around you. But the best preservation we have of this is from the people that lived there. Because they're the ones that just day in and day out made it a community. And it really was a community. Like, it was an okay place to live. There were lots of problems, but they banded together. And it was like a whole thing. You had neighbors. You had a postal address. You had your route. You had your favorite corner store. There was a church that the Salvation Army put there because they found their way in somehow. Uh, there was <laughs> a senior center. Like, a real sense of community there. Uh, there were kindergartens. There were schools. There was even kind of like a homeowners association. They were called the Kai Fon found the Kai, Kai Fon Association, and they did things like organize like events and like kind of do a little bit of regulatory stuff. But it was not true regulation. There was never really a true governing body that had like power over this place. The Hong Kong's at the police and sometimes, but there was no like real power system. So crime did, did continue. There was still community, but also crime. There were opium dens and like overdose bodies would be pulled out. There were strip shows, there was lawlessness, just because it was a convenient place to hide things, right? You have to navigate your way there. Um, one of the most interesting prevalent crimes was illicit dentistry, because you could go to somebody who was not a real dentist and get fillings for really cheap, right? So you come over from Hong Kong, go to the dentist, get your illegal fish balls and go home. Um, but because of the uh, lack of regulation, the persistent crime that was really unable to be eradicated, and just the fact that the city could not be modernized, like there was no way for it to modernize, it was demolished. And it was totally demolished, like completely gone. Everybody had to leave. All that was really left was the footprint and then one piece of the south gate. And now it's this big quiet park 
which is the opposite of what Kowloon ever was, right? This is the very opposite. And all those photographs of the inside, they're from the same couple of photographers. So all that we really have left are the people that live there who are now dispersed everywhere because they were evicted. So the best way to remember Kowloon is to seek it out and talk about it. Thanks, Kat. That was great. Thank you.